the video lesson for 8.10D. Your objective today is to model the effect on linear and area measurements of dilated two-dimensional shapes. So we're only dealing with dilations today. Only dilations. And we're talking about when I dilate a shape, when I enlarge it or when I shrink it, how does that change the perimeter and how does that change the area? That's all we're doing in this lesson. So we are going to take a few notes. I'm going to write it over here in my blank space. If I were you, I would um, write this in either at the very bottom or on the, um, on the far side of the page that you're gluing this into so that you'll still be able to see it whenever you've glued in this assignment. And here are the notes that we need for today. So when we dilate a figure, okay, when we dilate a figure, the area we multiply by scale factor squared. So we multiply by the scale factor squared. So for example, if I had this shape and then I dilate it by a scale factor of 3 to get this shape, Here, let's say um, the area is 10. So that means that I would multiply 10 times 3 squared, which would really be 10 times 9. So I'm going to multiply it by the scale factor squared. So this area would be 90. If the scale factor were 2, then I would multiply the area by 4. If the scale factor was 5, I would multiply the area by 25. So I'm squaring that scale factor. Now with perimeter, we multiply the perimeter by the scale factor. not the scale factor squared. So, if I have the same shape and I multiply it by a scale factor of 3 to get this shape, let's say the perimeter here is 11, then I would take 11 times 3, because that's the scale factor, and the perimeter over here would be 33. So all you need to remember on this today is that when we dilate a figure, the area is multiplied by the scale factor squared, and the perimeter is just multiplied by the scale factor. That's it. So let's do a couple of these together. Number one, the figure below shows rectangle ABCD similar to rectangle EFGH. So it says, what is the ratio of the perimeter? So here we're talking about perimeter of ABCD to the perimeter of EFGH. So let's look at this. What would the perimeter be here? Well, I would have to do 2 plus 3 plus 2 plus 3. So P equals 2 plus 3 plus 2 plus 3. So the perimeter equals, that's 5, plus 5 is 10. So perimeter of ABCD equals 10 centimeters. The perimeter of EFGH, that would be 5 plus 7.5 plus 5 plus 7.5. So 
be t equals 5 plus 7.5 plus 5 plus 7.5. So that's 12 and a half plus 12 and a half is 25. 25 centimeters. And of course you could, if you're doing this on your own, this is a great place to practice lining up your decimal points. Remember it's 5.0 plus 7.5 and we would get 12.5 there and then we would multiply it again or add it again. So what is the ratio? If I'm having to turn this into a ratio that would be 10 over 25 but I can simplify that. Let's say I can divide both of these by 5. 10 divided by 5 is 2. 25 divided by 5 is 5. I can't simplify that anymore. So it's saying that this rectangle is 2 fifths the size of this one. Okay, let's do the same thing with the areas. So question number one here is all about just discovering what's going on. That's what's going on here. So what is the ratio of the area of ABCD to the area of EFGH? So the area of ABCD and the area of EFGH. Okay, so the area of ABCD would be 2 times 3, so the area would be 6, so 6 centimeters squared because it's area. The area of EFGH would be 5 times 7.5, so I have to multiply that out, 7.5 times 5 is 25, 5 times 7 is 35, plus 2 is 37, and I need one digit after the decimal point, so 37.5, 37.5 centimeters squared. And so that would be our ratio, 6 over 37.5. So, and actually, if we simplified this out, we would get 4 over 25, because we would be squaring the 2 and squaring the 5 here. But that's just a little advanced. C, if the dimensions of rectangle ABCD were increased by a factor of 5, so my scale factor is 5 here, what would be the area of the enlarged rectangle? So let's say if the area, okay, the area here is 6 centimeters squared, and if I have a scale factor of 5, that means I'm going to take the 6 times 5 squared. Because remember, the rule says we multiply by the scale factor squared. So the scale factor is 5, 5 squared. So this would be 6 times 25. Let's go ahead and multiply that out. 30. 12, 15, so 150. So this would be 150 centimeters squared. So number one here is just to help us kind of discover what happens to the area and what happens to the perimeter, especially when we're given a particular scale factor. Let's look together at number 15. Number 15 is very similar to what you're going to see on the rest of today's lesson. A hexagon with an area of 75 square inches is dilated by a scale factor of 3. What is the area of the new hexagon? So, first of all, the fact that it's a hexagon does not matter. Okay, People get kind of nervous when they see odd shapes. So it's just a shape. 
a shape with an area of 75 square inches. So let's just draw this. Let's call it a rectangle here. So area equals 75 inches squared. And it's going to make a bigger rectangle. And we want to know what's the area of that. And the important thing here is that we are dilating it by a scale factor of 3. So to get from here to here, the length is being multiplied by 3 and the width is being multiplied by 3. So all I need to do is take 75 and its area, so we're going to multiply it by the scale factor squared. So times 3 squared. Well, I can rewrite that as 75 times 9 because I know that 3 squared is 9. Let's go off and multiply that here. 75 times 9. 9 times 7 is 63 plus 4 is 67. So that would be 675. 675 square inches. So that's all we did. We just took the small area, multiplied it by the scale factor squared to get our new area. That's it. So I'm going to ask you to do the rest of the area problems. So all of these are going to be area where you're multiplying by the scale factor squared. So please do number 16, number 22, and number 24. So 16, and then 22, and 24. And then bring them to me for a stamp. You're welcome to bring it to me after each question so I can double check it and make sure that you're on the right track, or you can do all three of those and then bring it to me. So please pause the video now and take care of 16, 22, and 24. Okay, so now you should have stamps for 16, 22, and 24. We're going to look at number 33 together. So it says two rectangles are similar with a ratio of proportionality of 3 to 4. The area of the larger is 80. What is the area of the smaller? So. Um, the first thing we need to do is draw some pictures because this uh, question kind of stumped me for a little bit until I kind of worked through it a couple different ways. So let me show you the best way to work through this. The first thing I would do is draw a couple of pictures. So here's the smaller rectangle and here's our larger rectangle. And the ratio between them is 3 to 4. So let's say that the length of the side of the smaller rectangle is 3, and so the larger rectangle has a side of 4. So we're showing that they're proportional. If this one's 3, then this one's 4. So if this was 6, then this would be 8, etc. So that's just the length of the sides, and also the perimeter in this case. But here, this question is talking about area. And so that's what makes it a little bit trickier. So we have to actually redraw our figures. And if we're talking about area, then we would actually have to double these. So let's say that this is 3 by 3 and this is 4 by 4. Well, in this area, of the smaller one would have to be 3 times 3, or 9. And the area of the larger one would be 4 times 4, or 16. So when we're talking about perimeter, or the length of the sides, it's the ratio of 3 to 4. But then when we're talking about area, it's a ratio of 9 to 16. So now we can set up our proportion and solve it. So the first thing we need to do is name our ratio. I'm going to kind of separate that off there. We're going to name it small over big. And there's lots of ways that you could name your ratio. This is just the habit that I'm in. This is what I always do. And then I kind of don't really have to think about it because I'm just constantly in that habit. It takes some of the work off of me. So now that I've named my ratio, I'm going to set up my proportion. Line equals line. 
and I'm going to start with the ratio that I know. I know that the area has a ratio of 9 to 16, so the smaller one obviously is the 9, and the big one is the 16. Now we're told that the area of the larger rectangle is 80. So where am I going to put that? It's not the small one, it's the big one. So I'm going to put 80 down here, and then x goes on top. So if we were dealing with perimeter, which when you get to number 19, that one's going to have to do with perimeter, then we wouldn't have to change it and redraw it again. We would just use the 3 and the 4. But since we're talking about area, we had to figure out what would the areas actually be on these figures. So now we're going to cross multiply. x times 16 is 16x. And then 9 times 80. Well, I know that 9 times 8 is 72. And then I just move the decimal one place to the right, or add a 0 in this case. And I get 720. So now let's divide both sides by 16. I end up being able to cross those out. And x equals, let's figure this out. So we're going to have to take up some extra space here. That's okay. Let's kind of give ourselves a little corner here. 720 divided by 16. Let's put our decimal in the quotient. 16 does not go into 7, but it does go into 72. Actually, why am I doing this? We don't need to do this. You guys have calculators. I have just finished doing a whole bunch of 7th grade stuff, and they don't have calculators this year. So 720 divided by 16 we should all be doing this, is 45. So, what we just figured out is if the area of the larger shape is 80, then the area of the smaller shape would be 45. And that's all. So, now I'd like for you to go on and complete number 35 on your own. And then bring it to me for a stamp before you move on. And then we will move on um, to perimeter problems together. Okay, let's look at number 19 together. We've done all of the area-specific problems. Now it's time to do the perimeter problems. And then the last problem that you do will be um, both. But let's talk about perimeter for a little bit. The scale factor of two similar pentagons, or just shapes, okay, is 1 to 2. The perimeter of the smaller pentagon, smaller pentagon is 24 inches. What is the perimeter of the larger pentagon? So, again, since we're dealing with perimeter, we can just use this scale factor. We don't have to square them to get area like we did on number 33. So this one's going to be very simple. Let's set up our, uh, let's name our ratio. So I'm going to do small over big. And then we can set up our proportion. Line equals line. And this, if my uh, scale factor is 1 to 2, obviously 1 would be the smaller one, and 2 would be the big one. Now it tells me that the perimeter of the smaller pentagon is 24 inches. Small goes on top, so I'm going to put 24 on top. And then it says, what is the perimeter of the larger pentagon? So the big one is what we're looking for. So x goes on bottom. So now let's start cross multiplying. I love it when this happens. 1 times x is 1x. So that's just x. That is awesome. 2 times 24. If we put that in our calculator, we're going to get 48. And this is in inches. So that is my answer, 48 inches. Number 20 is just like this one. So I'd like for you to do number 20 on your own. Also number 27, and then number 21. So number 20, 27, and 21 on your own, please. And then we will come back and talk about number 26. So please pause the video now 
and then be at, once you've completed those three questions, you can bring them to me for your space. Your last question today is number 26. Um, it has four parts. It's asking you for the perimeter of the original drawing, and then how does the new perimeter compare to the old perimeter, and then what's the area of the original drawing, and how does the area of the new figure compare to the area of the old figure? So what happens to the area, and on B, what happens to the perimeter? Please make sure that on each of these, you have the correct units. That means um, inches for perimeter, inches squared for area. And make sure that you're following the rules from our notes that we took at the very beginning of the lesson. Remember that when we dilate a figure, when we enlarge it or shrink it, the area will be multiplied by the scale factor squared, and the perimeter will be multiplied by the scale factor. If you have any questions, you can ask me. This is going to be worth four stamps for A, B, C, and D. When you're finished with this, please bring it to me for your stamps, and also make sure that I get your grade in the gradebook for 8.10D.